If pictures of those towering summer wildfires haven't convinced you, or record drought, or the size of your AC bill this summer, here are some hard numbers on climate change. More than 40,000 heat records were set in 2012 across the USA. May 2012 was the 327th consecutive month in which the temperature of the entire globe exceeded the 20th century average. Now what are the odds of that occurring? One out of four? 40? 400? 4,000? Add 95 more zeros. One out of a number considerably larger than the number of stars in the universe. Arctic sea ice melts to a record low in 2012. Today's oceans are 30% more acidic. Carbonic acid from burning fossil fuels is dissolving the shells and bones of life in the seas. The atmosphere over the oceans is a shocking 5% wetter, loading the dice for devastating storms. Hurricane Sandy made that point with a vengeance. Storms on greenhouse gas steroids will continue to get worse. Sandy devastated five Caribbean islands, New York, New Jersey, much of the U.S. Northeast, and several Canadian provinces. Over 170 deaths and billions in losses. Now, to understand global warming, we just need to understand a few numbers. The Copenhagen Climate Conference failed spectacularly. The big emitters, China and the United States, offered few concessions. Amid the chaos, President Obama took the lead in drafting a face-saving Copenhagen Accord that fooled very few. Copenhagen is a crime scene tonight, an angry Greenpeace official declared, with the guilty men and women fleeing to the airport. But the accord did contain one important number, two degrees. Copenhagen formally recognized the scientific view that the increase in global temperature should be below two degrees Celsius. And everyone agreed that deep cuts in global emissions are required. So far, we've raised the average temperature of the planet just under 0.8 degrees Celsius. But that has caused far more damage than scientists expected. Thomas Lovejoy. If we're seeing what we're seeing today at 0.8 degrees Celsius, two degrees is simply too much. Alice Bose. Two degrees represents the threshold between dangerous and extremely dangerous climate change. James Hansen. Two degrees of warming is actually a prescription for long-term disaster. No more than two degrees. That is the bottom line. The second number we need to understand is 565 gigatons. Scientists estimate that we can pour roughly 565 more gigatons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and still have a reasonable hope of staying below two degrees of warming. However, carbon emissions keep growing by roughly 3% a year. At that rate, we'll blow through our 565 gigaton allowance in only 16 years. The third number is 2,795 gigatons the amount of carbon contained in the proven coal, oil, and gas reserves. In short, the fossil fuel we're currently planning to burn. This number, 2,795, is obviously higher than 565. It's five times higher. We have five times more oil, coal, and gas on the books than climate scientists think is safe to burn. We'd have to keep 80% of those reserves locked away underground to avoid climate catastrophe. Now we can have a healthy fossil fuel balance sheet, or we can have a relatively healthy planet. 
But now that we know the numbers, we cannot have both. So, can we fix this? We can. How do we go forward? Here's a new number. 1%. The Cambridge University Global Review, The Economics of Climate Change, said the cost of mitigating global warming is 1% of global GDP. Creating the infrastructure and capacity to decrease emissions and improve efficiency will cost about $790 billion per year. Is that achievable? Well, let's look at spending for fossil fuel developments. North America Pipeline Plans. Shell expansion in Canada and Qatar. Shell Arctic developments. Investments by major Russian companies. New oil refineries in Nigeria and Alberta. Chevron's development in the North Sea, Congo and Venezuela. The purchase of reserves, investment, and exploration plans. But that's not all. The International Energy Association in the United Nations say 2008 fossil fuel subsidies were between 500 and 700 billion dollars. In 2012, the Natural Resources Defense Fund says global fossil fuel subsidies are 775 billion dollars. The Climate Vulnerable Forum report, published in September 2012, says annual climate change costs are 1.2 trillion, 1,200 billion, mostly in less developed countries. The International Energy Agency estimates oil importing countries will spend $2 trillion on oil in 2012, and in 2013, and 2014 and 2015. So, let's do the math. $4,280 billion, the cost to keep burning oil, divided by $790 billion, the cost to convert the world to renewable energy, equals... Now what does this mean? It means the global cost of oil is more than five times the cost to abandon it. And we haven't even talked about the costs of coal. Nor have we talked about the hidden costs of fossil fuels. The U.S. National Academy of Sciences estimated illness due to fossil fuel pollution costs the United States healthcare system $120 billion per year. The USA is only about 4% of the global population. So what are the healthcare costs globally? $500 billion? 750 billion? More? Munich Ray, a top reinsurer, links the rapid rise in North American extreme weather catastrophes to fossil fuel driven climate change. Climate driven catastrophes in North America have risen from an average of 50 per year in the early 1980s to over 200 post 2005. We cannot sustain such massive loss of life and property. Catastrophe costs are building every year in North America and around the world. There is one other number in the Climate Vulnerable Forum report. 400,000. Climate change contributes to the deaths of nearly 400,000 people every year. 400,000 people every year. So, now we've done the math. Where do we go from here? Fossil fuels cost us much more to use than to abandon. Lives lost. Health costs. Environmental destruction. And money. Our money. Over five times as much money. We can move forward. We can prevent climate catastrophe. We must get off fossil fuels.
beginning now.